too much of our industry has been built on the thought that I got to do it all myself. We're really, you got to look for the helpers. Hello, welcome to episode 199 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Jackie Summerall Tate, the queen of relational real estate. Based out of the Flagstaff, Arizona area, this top producing realtor, acclaimed real estate coach, and best selling author has built a booming business after once losing everything and having just $4 to her name. Since rebounding from that setback, Jackie has now achieved top 1% status within her group five years in a row. Throughout our conversation, Jackie shares lessons she learned while building her business back up, how much of an impact relationships have had on her success, and why it is so important to set boundaries with your clients. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the Smart Agents Magazine is available and full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you'll find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Be sure to click the link in the episode description to claim a free digital issue. Also, if you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Jackie Summerall Tate. Be sure to check out the episode description where I've included several links to her content as well as a special gift she is offering to all of our listeners. Really, the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit. Uh, tell us you know, where you're located and a bit, you know, brief uh, story about your background. Sure. Uh, my name is Jackie Summerall Tate. I am located in Flagstaff, Arizona and Clarkdale, Arizona. I kind of split my time between the two. So... Uh, practice real estate all throughout Northern Arizona. And we are with Realty One Group Mountain Desert. And I've been selling real estate since 2002. I actually got started in real estate because I wanted to represent myself, my own um, investment uh, portfolio. But I actually fell in love with it and said, you know what, I, I want to do this for real. And so that's how I that's how I got started all those years ago. And here we are. That's awesome. That's great. I mean, to fall in love with something after wanting to represent yourself in your own transaction, that's, that's uh, really cool how that, you know, career flourished from that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. In fact, um, so much so that now I train all of our new agents in uh, Realty One Group Mountain Desert. I also do uh, coaching for our agents nationwide. So yeah, absolutely. And, you know, best selling author. So I really kind of want to talk to you about, you know, um, that the $4 story. And that's a that's a big thing when, you know, with your name attached to it is the $4 story. So tell us a little bit about what that is. So the, the short version of the $4 story is basically in the Great Recession of 2008, I, along with many people who made a living in real estate, ended up losing everything. I had to short sell my house. I ended up moving back in with my parents. At the time, I was a single mom, so I'm bringing my two elementary school age children in tow and moving in with my parents. And at the time, you know, I, I came from making a really healthy living going, oh, it'll be no big deal. I'll just take a couple months, get back on my feet. Not a problem. It actually took two and a half years. And it was during that two and a half years that I really hit a low point in terms of I had a bank account at zero. I had another one overdrawn. I was, you know, in debt up to my eyeballs. And I woke up one morning and I had four single dollar bills in my wallet. And I just remember the feeling of looking at that and saying, that is all the money I have to my name right now. And knowing that Every day I'm working, I'm working hard to get out of that. Before I got into real estate, my background was in marketing and advertising. So while I was still working in the real estate industry, I also started helping small businesses with their marketing and things like that. And so it was just a really rough time and a rough go with things. And the whole thing of the $4 story is really there were seven lessons that I learned during that time 
frame that I share with other people through keynotes and, and my books and things like that. Um, I won't get into all seven of them here today. Um, you know, but one of them that I do really like to highlight is to look for the helpers. You know, Mr. Rogers is famous for saying, look for helpers. They're always there. And it's so true. And I think so many times we get really wrapped up into our own world, our own, um, capabilities or lack thereof. And we think when we're struggling, we have to really fight and just do it all on our own. But during this time frame, if it weren't for the helpers who came alongside of me, I would have not been able to make it through. Obviously, my parents who allowed me and my girls to move in with them. But there were so many other people as well, people who opened doors for me, people who maybe helped me out a little bit uh, to get through that period of time. And I think the most valuable part of that lesson is that we are all created to interact with one another. We're created to be in relationship with one another. And so when we think we're going to be self-sufficient and do everything on our own, it actually leaves us in a position where we're robbing other people of being able to use their gifts if their gifts can contribute to helping you at that time. So that's just one of the lessons that I like to share because so much of our business is wrapped up in relationships. So just always yeah. being on the lookout. Yeah, absolutely. So take me back to before, you know, uh, the great recession and how had you built your real estate career, you know, in that time period? Well, it's interesting because I started in 2002. So the fact that like we all had individual emails at the time was revolutionary. <laughs> so I still remember the sales rep who came in from a website company that was dedicated ju just to building re um, real estate agent websites. And I, I still remember so many people in my office meeting being like, oh, this is I don't get it. It's fly by night. We don't need it. And I was like, no, sign me up. Sign me up. I got my first website right, right out of the gates. Um, so what I knew of marketing and advertising has certainly morphed over time. But I used the skills that I had at the time, uh, you know, to, to get my feet underneath me. But truly, I ended up building it mostly by relationship, working with friends, family members, sphere, sphere of influence, and then working to build that sphere of influence and letting people know that this is what I do for a living. And so getting a lot of referrals from just places that you wouldn't even necessarily anticipate. But that was that was how I began my career. And I have to tell you, like, if I'm being completely transparent, I didn't necessarily design my business to be by relationship. I was just throwing stuff out there left and right and like, what sticks? And that's when I actually realized like, yeah, it is truly a relationship based business. And that's where you need to put your focus. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, did that, I have to imagine, you know, the relationships that you had cultivated prior to the recession, I have to imagine that some of those people, you know, helped you know, kind of springboard you back, you know, into the real estate game once things turned around a little bit. Did that help a little bit having those prior relationships? That's an interesting. So the answer is yes, but I will tell you that the, the thing that I did. So I became a single mom in all of this. I was married when I started my real estate career. And when I went through the divorce, I got a job working as a um, in a C-level suite for a Fortune 150 title company. And it was my job to put together programs to help other agents. So I really took my experience as an agent and my experience in marketing and advertising, married them together in this in this position. And so I would help agents throughout the greater Phoenix area learn how to market themselves, learn how to start a blog, all of these different things. And so really when everything, you know, and I went back to being an agent before the Great Recession. So, you know, there I was. But when things bounced back and I got my feet back underneath me as an agent, I had actually moved marketplaces. So now I'm in Northern Arizona. And being in Northern Arizona and knowing so many real estate agents in the greater Phoenix area, I really kicked off by reaching out to a lot of the people in my network there to offer referrals. Hey, if you have anybody who wants a vacation home, if you have anybody who needs to move up here, 
uh, you know, I'm your I'm your agent. And so that aspect of it absolutely helped me relaunch. Right. Absolutely. And so, you know, through that relaunch and you were getting, you know, getting the referrals from the previous agents you worked for, how did you market yourself to a brand new to a brand new market that didn't you didn't know you to get those new leads that were already there? So by this point, it's 2014. And uh, so lots more options available uh, for us. So I really did use the power of social media and uh, my websites. I built my own website at experienceflagstaff.com, really started to interview local um, business owners and, uh, you know, actually hired an assistant who had lived in Flagstaff for um, you know, decades. And so she was very ingrained into the community. And so in hiring her, she introduced me to a lot of people. She wrote a lot of the content for the website, things like that. And so I really started to build it by, by highlighting the lifestyle of Flagstaff, uh, because that's where we first moved and where I was truly concentrated. Now we've got you know, a vacation home in Clarkdale. So I do, I split my time between the two and have expanded that marketplace. But that was how I really started to build things up uh, when I first moved to Flagstaff because I knew no one. I knew three people and two of them were realtors. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I'm really interested, you know, the, the highlighting the community and kind of being that community expert and, you know, helping people that are maybe looking to relocate. I think you know, all that content is so great. And I have a lot of friends that uh, have done really well in real estate by doing the same thing. They were all, you know, previously journalists. And so that storytelling, it just kind of comes naturally to them. Um, what was it about that, you know, style of marketing and that kind of content marketing uh, did you see the benefit in? I think the biggest benefit is it helped me open doors to meet people in the community. That's that's kind of the biggest thing. Nobody, you know, if you call people and say, hey, I'm a local real estate agent and I would like to sit down with you for 20 minutes to to find out if I can help you with your real estate needs. Most people on a cold call like that are going to say, no, thank you. I already know an agent. I already have someone. I already am an agent, whatever the case is. Uh, but when you call them and say, hey, I noticed your business is in downtown Flagstaff. And right now I'm highlighting businesses in downtown, downtown Flagstaff for my website. Can I sit down with you for 20 minutes to have a chat and take a couple pictures of your coffee shop or take a couple pictures of your general store? Whatever the case may be, the answer is never no. You know, it's either absolutely come today. How fast can you get here? Or, you know, I'm really busy right now, but how about in two weeks? But it's never no. Yeah. And I really like that because I actually have never had anybody talk about that as aspect of that type of, you know, content creation. Usually, you know, we talk about the, you know, people being able to search you and search the different things and see what their lifestyle would be. But nobody ever talks about creating those relationships with the business owners. And I think that's a that's a fantastic side of that type of content creation is all the different people that you've now built relationships with that can now refer people to you. It is. It's a lot of fun. And what we, uh, so my husband and I actually now, he's also in real estate. And now what we do, we have a YouTube channel called The Empty Nester Life. It's not focused on real estate, but it is focused on highlighting different travel, hotel reviews. Um, we do house hunting tours. Every time we go on vacation, we go hunt, look at houses, do a video about it. Uh, and so we actually started to get contacted by people who were looking for an agent in the areas we were doing the, you know, the videos. And, and so we were able to refer uh, some people, but we really looked at each other and said, listen, we live in Northern Arizona, which is a gorgeous place. It's a big tourist draw. There's a lot of content literally in our backyards. And so we're starting to highlight the festivals, the restaurants, the communities, really in our own backyard so that we can build up the interest. And, and now when we do house hunting videos, we'll get the leads instead of having to refer them out. So that's kind of our, that's our next wave that we just started to focus on. Right. Absolutely. It, you know, and, and watching your videos and watching your social media content, you're very authentic too. It's not, you know, the, the person that you, um, that, you know, a viewer sees in those videos is the person 
that they are, you know, meeting across the table. And how important is that when it comes to the content marketing? Because you do, there are, you know, sometimes you'll see the two different sides of, you know, there's the social media side and then the real life side. Yep. Michael, that is the most important thing because listen here, it, and it takes a little bit to get over it. I'm not going to lie. In fact, my husband used to give me a hard time. He goes, quit using, how what did he call it? Quit using the video voice. And so, so, I mean, in the beginning, because, and you'll notice now that I've said it, you're going to see it everywhere. When you watch TikToks, YouTube, especially women. And I mean, men have their own version of this, but obviously as a woman, here I am. Uh, and we kind of have this tendency to, you know, we talk kind of like this and welcome. And, you know, and it's almost like this weird dialect. And my husband was like, knock that off. Like, stop, stop doing that. He's like, just talk how you talk. And I really had to step back and do that. And I would hear myself and go, oh, but I don't like how I sound. But now I actually look back and there's still a few of them hanging out where I'm using the video voice and I'm like, oh, I hate that. (laughs) So you do, you have to be authentically you. Here's why it's so important is that when you show up at video and you're just authentically who you are, the people watching it, if they love you, then they're going to love you and they're going to want to work with you. And if they really don't like you, you don't want to work with those people anyway. So let them figure it out before you ever meet them face to face. And now when people call me off of the videos, it is literally, hey, I love I love you and your husband, your banter, your sense of humor, you know, and come on, we got the corniest sense of humor. We're all about dad jokes and all sorts of things like that. But you know what? If that's something that someone else is naturally attracted to, boom, we have this instant connection and it's a lot easier to bridge the gap to trust because they feel like they already know you. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the video voice, uh, very familiar with that. I was I was telling you before we started, I was a videographer and I used to work with brand new reporters all the time and they would start, you know, ripping off their scripts. And I would just, it's like, we're going to, we're in a timeout that doesn't sound anything like you. You, you look so stiff. Let's just loosen up. Just talk to me. Like we're, you know, forget the cameras here and let's just talk. You do. You have to forget the camera. In fact, there was and forgive me because I don't remember where the source of this, this isn't my own original idea, but there was a woman who was in the title industry and she knew she had to do some videos, super uncomfortable being on camera. So she actually took her phone and set it up on, you know, selfie mode and just put it in front of her. And as she's working, she's getting used to seeing herself in the screen. She wasn't recording or anything, but she was just getting used to it. So that when she started to record video, it didn't feel that foreign. It wasn't that big of a deal. And she didn't mind seeing herself on camera because she'd gotten her brain used to it. Yeah. One of the things I want to talk to you about, um, and it kind of, you know, with doing all this content creation, and then at the same time, you know, you're you know, your business is thriving. So you're not just doing the content creation, but it's the showing of the houses and dealing with clients. Burnout is something that can really happen in that time, especially when you're doing all those different things. So how do you, how do you avoid the burnout, but also be able to have the time to, you know, do the content creation and, and spend the time with your clients to make sure that you are giving them your all. That is the most important thing that I learned. And, you know, I always joke around and say, listen, the things that I teach and preach is because I learned them the hard way. (laughs) But, you know, having gone through the Great Recession and working 18 hours a day and getting nowhere, uh, once you start to get somewhere, you continue to work 18 hours a day thinking like, I can't, I gotta, I gotta keep it going. I gotta keep it going because I can't get back to nothing again. Um, but here's the deal. I actually worked myself right into the hospital and I ended up in the emergency room and then bedridden for 10 days. Now I will tell you there was an underlying health issue. Uh, it wasn't just burnout that put me there, but it was the constant stress and the lack of rest that brought this underlying health issue to the surface. And so I learned really fast, you have to protect your time, you have to get plenty of rest. So the best thing I started to do is put boundaries around my schedule. And so now 
people know, I let my clients know when I very first start working with them. Hey, listen, if you need to get a hold of me, you can reach me anywhere between 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. I try to protect my Sundays. I try to protect my evenings. And I feel that those are very generous work hours. You know, a lot of people are nine to five. You go to your doctor, you're not getting a hold of him at 501. Uh, but I get it. Sometimes I need to be available after somebody else gets off of work. And so I will make myself available for that. And all my clients know too, listen, there are going to be times when we're negotiating an offer, a contract that comes in at 8 p.m. and it's a tight market or, you know, the house comes on the market on a Saturday afternoon. So we've got to go see it Sunday. It's okay. I'll break those rules for time sensitive events. But other than that, if you're just texting me, calling me, we're just doing regular stuff. Those are my hours. And I stick very heavily to them. In fact, if my phone rings at 855, I might be perfectly available to take that call, but I'll let it go to voicemail and call them back in five minutes because you don't want to start to blur the edges because then you're right back to 18 hour days. So that's number one, and that is the most important thing. And then the other thing is just really making sure that I'm treating my time with my family like an appointment. When my husband and I are out at dinner or we're out to lunch or we're out to breakfast, whatever, I'm not taking calls. It's an hour, hour and a half. There's nothing that's going to happen that's going to completely blow apart in that time frame, unless there is. You know when you go and sit down at a uh, you know at a dinner or a lunch with somebody from your personal life, you absolutely know if you've got an escrow that's kind of teetering or you've got a deal that you, so you can let people know, hey, I'm not going to answer my call, but unless it's this one person, I'm going to have to attend to it, and and you do it that way, but you're not just randomly, oh, it's a new lead, let me let me grab this. You have to protect your time uh, and your efforts outside of real estate. And then I'll finish this by saying that happened to me in 2018 where I worked myself into the ground. I have been top 1% with our company, Realty One Group, nationwide for five years running. The first year I hit that top 1% was 2019. And I don't think it is a coincidence that when I started to protect my time and get plenty of rest and take some time away to get, you know, to be with my loved ones instead of just real estate, real estate all the time, that's when my book of business truly exploded. So I do think there's a good correlation in there. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, talking about setting those boundaries with um, clients, you know, I know a lot of people are worried about the, oh, well, you know, they think I'm not, you know, working hard for them. But everybody that I've talked to that has set those boundaries says my relationships with my clients got so much better when they had an idea of what those boundaries were. Well, it's true. And they also respect you more. They, you know, you think about this, if you were going to start going to the doctor and this doctor told you, listen, I am available to you 24 seven. Whenever you call me, if you have a question, I got you. I'm going to pick up the phone. You call me at 10 o'clock at night. I'll, I'll call you back. It's, I got you. Aren't you going to think like, what's wrong with this doctor? Like they're not very professional. So why do we think as realtors that we need to go that direction? I find that my clients actually respect me more as a professional when I put those boundaries around my time. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I do totally uh, agree with the, you know, making that time for the family and really taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the that's the most important thing. Take care of yourself, because if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not there for your clients. You know, yep. if, you're, if you're laid up in the hospital, there's nothing you can do for them. No, in fact, there were a couple things that fell through the cracks during that period of time. And it really was it was eye opening. Um, yeah. So, yeah. What, um, you know, and, and, and since that time, you know, in being top 1% and what, you know, just how have you, how have you managed, like, what are some of the things that you've actually been able to manage to doing the content creation? And I have to imagine, you know, having a good support system and support team around you to, you know, help with some of these things. How big of, how important is it to have that, you know, support team around you? Well, it's really important. In fact, I, again, around setting my boundaries, I started to build a team at a certain point. And then when I went through that health issue, I actually brought one of my team members on and she's now my business partner, best decision I made. And so I think 
as realtors, we tend to get like very, it's just me. I'm the only one who can do the job that I'm doing. And sometimes you have to let it go and say, listen, I'm not the only one. The business partner that I have, her name is Stacy, and she and I work so well together. She's got different strengths than I have. But the thing that brings us together and makes us a really good working team is because we have the same philosophies. We have the same overall belief on how business should be done. We believe in generosity. We believe in the fact that there's enough business for everyone. We high five our comp our competition when they have a good month uh, and somebody somebody beats us. You know, I mean, we've been the top we've been the top um, producers in our local office year over year over year. But every once in a while, and you see somebody who's really kind of coming after you, we don't get mad or jealous. We go, okay, first of all, we need to keep our game. It, it's good for us because it keeps us from getting lazy. It keeps us from getting our game on. But also we celebrate the people who are coming up and having good months or good years or what have you. Like, we definitely believe that that, you know, and I get idioms wrong all the time. So <laughs> forgive me if I get this one wrong, but it's the rising tide lifts all ships or something like that. Yeah. Okay. We, so we really believe in, in that philosophy. So yeah, it's finding the right partners. It's finding the right team members. Um, and then also on the admin side, we have a transaction coordinator and I couldn't do this without her at all. And then um, for the content creation for the YouTube channel that my husband and I do, we hired an editor and um, we actually hired an editor a while ago. It was wonderful. And then he actually ended up getting too busy on his end. And so we, he, we weren't working with him anymore. So just recently, I started working with some new editors again, because I'm like, oh, when I try to take it all on and do my own editing and all that stuff, like, yeah, sure, I get the videos out, but certainly in no consistency or anything yeah. like that. So it really kind of hurt the eyeballs on our channel type thing. So yeah, you got to be willing to not... Um, micromanage every aspect of everything You'd be much happier. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, on top of all that, that you do, tell me about, you know, writing this book and in, you know, really sharing your story and, uh, and coaching agents and, and really being a, a voice, you know, to help inspire, uh, up and coming agents. So I will tell you that, uh, I, coaching is to me, my real juice. I love working in real estate. I love helping buyers and sellers see that dream come true, whatever that looks like in their world and helping them and using what I have to help them. But really, I love coaching agents. I love working with the newbies because I feel like, you know, they're, they just, you know, they come in and they're like drinking from a fire hose and their eyes are like, I have no idea what I stepped into. And so for me, that's a lot of fun, especially you kind of help people understand what does this career look like? You didn't get a job. You don't have a boss. You started a business. And so how do you grow that business? How do you become a great agent? And that's a lot of fun. But I also love working with seasoned agents who maybe are tired of being on that commission roller coaster where it's like, oh, I'm doing great. I had a closing and now, oh my gosh, I have nothing and I can't pay my bills. And oh my gosh, I did great. And I have, and nobody wants to live that way. And so helping them understand how to create a more consistent book of business, but also create a nest egg for the times when it's not consistent so that you don't have to panic and you don't have to pull all your marketing dollars out of the market because you're like, oh, I just, I don't have it right now. I don't, I don't have it to run ads for my, um, for my, my clients, uh, listings, or I don't have the funds to hire a professional photographer. I'll just use my cell phone. No, 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 no bad, bad, bad. You know? So working with agents to help them understand how they can actually just create this as a consistent book of business. Uh, I just, I love doing that. So uh, yeah, so that's my jam. So that's where you make time for, you make time for what really feeds you and what's important to you. And so people will ask that question, how do you do it? I have no idea. I have no idea. I just, I do because I love all the things I do. I love. So I think that's how it works. Yeah, I definitely think it, it makes it makes doing all that stuff a lot more uh, palatable if it's a, if 
if you enjoy it, if it's, you know, if it's not necessarily a job and that you're just having fun and you're, you know, kind of filling up your own tank doing this, it, it definitely makes uh, spending the time doing it a lot easier. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, if you're the, the great thing with real estate and real estate coaching too, I think they kind of go hand in hand is that you can create content just when you're out. You don't, you don't have to like make a special, Oh, let's go do a shoot day. I mean, every once in a while you do need to do that. And that's okay for certain listings and things like that. But other than that, you can get content just by, you know, Hey, I'm out here. I'm doing this thing. I just started. I'm no TikTok expert, so don't get me wrong when I say this, but I did just start focusing on TikTok a little bit. And so I'm doing like cool things that you see in real estate. So it really is if I'm out showing a house and I see something cool, I'm like, hey, this would make a great little 60 second, 30 second snippet and I'll throw it out, uh, you know, so it doesn't really take extra time. It's a few extra minutes at the end of the day when I'm sitting down decompressing anyway. So if I'm going to be scrolling on my phone, I might as well put a little video together and, and let it fly. So it's things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, you know, it, and you mentioned it, you know, really enjoying um, talking with those newbies. And I think it is, you know, you, I talked to so many people that when they got in, they didn't realize, you know, they just, they, they, I guess they don't realize how different a, a business that is solely dependent on your production going from that, you know, employee mindset to entrepreneur, entrepreneur mindset. Uh, would that be your number one piece of advice for new agents is to really treat from the get go this as a, a business of your, as a, you know, as a small business of your own? That is definitely what I would recommend in terms of mindset, in terms of practicality, get a mentor. I think, you know, when agents come out, they try to do it themselves. In our brokerage, we require a brand new agent to work with a mentor for their first six transactions. It's, if they don't want to do that, they're, then we're not the brokerage for them. And, and part of that is to help them learn how to be an entrepreneur, how to be their own boss. But the other part of that is, I mean, we deal with contracts and legalities. Uh, Arizona is not an attorney state, so we actually have sort of a limited law um, responsibility there. And so when you're brand new, you don't know what you don't know. And so working with a mentor also helps you keep your clients out of trouble, helps keep you out of trouble, helps you learn how to look at the different nuances of a transaction to go, oh, you know, there's a lot of if this happens, then that. And you have to protect the if then scenarios by properly writing your contracts. So if you're looking at it as it's your own business and you're working with a mentor who can help you along the way with all the other things that are going into it, then it's gonna become very apparent very quickly if this career is gonna be a good fit for you or not. Yeah, I love that about having the mentor too and the requirement uh, with your brokerage to have that because you know, beyond those six months, things are gonna come up you know, you, you're going to encounter something for the first time five years into your career. But if you've already built that relationship with somebody, you know, that you can bounce ideas off of, that's a, that's mm -hmm. fantastic to have. It, it really is. It's, it's an important aspect. Again, I, it all goes back to too much of our industry has been built on the thought that I got to do it all myself. We're really, you got to look for the helpers because that's going to help elevate your game, whether it's in your career, your personal life or both. Yeah, absolutely. Well, before we wrap up, uh, let us know where people can find, um, you know, more, uh, you know, your social channels, but also your coaching as well. So the best place to connect with me is if you go to steps to strength.com. That is um, a way where you can connect with all the things you'll find our YouTube channel, you can connect with me as a realtor, connect with me as a coach, you'll find my books, all the things. Uh, but for your audience, I do have a special uh, gift. So if you go to buyreferral.com, so byreferral.com, I have a four steps to sphere of, in let me say that right, four steps to sphere of influence mastery. If I could master saying that, that'd be great. <laughs> but, um, but really, it is the four things that I do on a consistent basis that helps me build my business by referral. Uh, right now, I'm over 93% referral-based business. 
for my own personal book business. And so uh, I share that with you and then you'll get put into the loop. I don't email a ton of stuff, but you'll get put into the loop so that when I launch my next coaching uh, pod, you'll be invited. Awesome. Well, we really do appreciate it. And I'll be sure to have all the links, uh, you know, in the episode so people can find those nice and quickly. But I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk with us today. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. It's been a great conversation with you, Michael. I want to thank Jackie for joining us today. And I really love her advice on setting boundaries with clients to allow you to recharge your batteries and how she's highlighting local businesses in her content. Remember, check out the episode description where I've added a link to her free gift. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.